Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Music of the Month, where, if you're not familiar with it by now, I listen, well, I list all the music I listened to in the previous month, this case being September 2019, and tell you what I thought about each album with a lovely little grade for each one, just attached to the end, like a, like a weird thing that gets attached to other things. As always, we go by alphabetical, alphabetical order with the band names, uh, so, you know. And as always, like, my grades will not reflect my personal feeling. Well, they will. But, you know, that's the whole Discord thing. I've said it before. Yeah. Uh, we start with... Oh, one I... Oh, okay. As I Lay Dying with Shape by Fire. Now, I really fucking like this album. I'm gonna say that right off the bat. It's the first album in seven years because of what happened in the time between. If you don't know what happened in the time between, I'm not gonna tell you. Google is there. Use that. But yeah, I feel like this was a really good return to form. I feel like any demons the band had in the past are sort of like completely gone now. I really, really enjoy this album. Um, I'm going to give it personally probably an A. That's how much I liked it. I thought this was really, really good. Verging on A-plus territory, but I'm going to keep it an A. I really, really enjoyed it. And um, yeah, it, like a lot of it stuck with me. It was heavy. It was melodic. It was everything you expect of As I Lay Dying and more. You know, added with, like, the seven-year wait since their last album, making it feel a bit more special, in a way. Uh, next is Blink-182 with Nine. I, al I almost missed this album. Uh, there's a couple of albums I almost missed, but this one I almost, almost missed. Um, this is their first one since California, and I was in the group of people who was sort of okay with California. It wasn't super great. Uh, it wasn't super great to me. Nine was a huge step up, in my opinion. Um, like, it, it feels more like classic Blink-182, but really more modernized and a bit darker than we usually get from them. Uh, for an album cover that's, like, really colorful as well and really vibrant. Um, I think I'm gonna give this a B plus. I really thought this was really good. Definitely a big step up from California, in my opinion. And it was nice to hear Matt Skiba getting a bit more time to shine, because I feel like that was a problem with the last one. I feel like there was too much Mark, not enough Matt. This time, there's a balance between the two, which is good. Uh, next is Capstan with Restless Heart Keep Running, their full-length debut. I remember hearing about these guys some point last year, because a friend of mine, like, tagged me in one of their songs, and I remember hearing that and thinking, a band that mixes prog rock with pop punk, really? And it works? Um, this album is a really good example of that. Um, had a lot of good going for it. I feel like the band could have tapped into a little bit more potential, personally. But I like this album, it was a really solid, uh, really solid debut. And um, hopefully the guys, you know, th this band will keep going because this really impressed me. I'm going to give it a B. Um, I thought, you know, this was really good stuff. And um, I feel like the band just need to sort of learn how to elevate themselves because they weren't quite there yet. But their mix of styles worked really well. It flowed well into each song on the album. So, yeah, I can't really fault it. There wasn't really a lot bad to say about it. Uh, next is Disciple with Love Letter Kill Shot. Um, their first album in three years since Long Live the Rebels. And Long Live the Rebels was kind of boring to me. This one was, once again, a big step up, much like Blink-182's album. Um, but yeah, I thought this was um, really, really good stuff. I remember anticipating it when I heard the song Panic Room, which features Andrew Schraub from Project 86. As you know, I love Project 86. They're awesome. And Disciple definitely have more of a return to form. There's a lot more of a heavier feel, and there's less usage, I've noticed, of... Um, of Bible verses, because they were a big fan of using those in their early stuff where Disciple. So, yeah, it's nice to hear them, like, sound a bit more human, I guess. It is still a bit cheesy at the end of the day, but it's also quite heavy, and it's good where it needs to be. I'm going to give this one a B as well. Like, you know, once again, not really a lot I can fault, not really a lot I can take away from it. I wish more of it stuck with me than it did, but it was still good stuff. Uh, next is Dragon Force with Extreme Power Metal, and... I'm going to just say, I'm probably going to give this a B-plus right off the bat. I love how they embrace their full-on, like, cheesy side. You don't get much cheesier than a power metal cover of My Heart Will Go On as the last track on an album. I mean, the entire album, like, has that sort of style on it. It's Dragon Force not taking themselves too seriously. And in other times, that would seem like a sort of mock of themselves, but they've been around for such a long time now that I feel like they sort of earned this right. Mark Hudson, like, you know, fits in better and better with each passing album. Uh, each a passing album. I don't know why I did it like that. Um, you know, the new drummer, Guy Anzalone, like, is starting to fit in uh, better as well. Uh, first album without Vadim Prazhinov. I hope I'm saying his surname right. Um, but yeah, this was still really solid, really good stuff. I, I liked it. Top, top, uh, top stuff from Dragon Force. 
Uh, next is Grayscale with Nella Vita, my first Grayscale album. Um, eventually we're going to reach it on this list, you know, my first album by this band that's been around a little bit. But yeah, um, really solid sort of pop punk alternative rock uh, next, released on Hopeless. You know, Hopeless is like the home of pop punk, that sort of emo style thing. And uh, I think I'm going to give this one a, a B. I wanted a lot more of this to stick with me, but what did stick with me, I really enjoyed. Um, there wasn't a whole lot to hate about it. I wish I could remember it, remember more of it than I do. It was enjoyable, it was good, it was, you know, once again, much like with um, Capstan, it was good where it needed to be. It had that really good balance. Uh, sorry, not Capstan Disciple. But yeah, pretty solid, pretty good all around stuff. Next is Hell Yeah with Welcome Home. Um, I think this is their first album since Vinnie Paul died last year, rest in peace. And um, I regret not listening to these guys sooner because I've forgotten how much of a great vocalist Chad Gray is. He's best known for his work in. Uh, What's it called? Uh, Mudvayne. Uh, he's really well known for his work with them, but on Hell Yeah as well, he's absolutely fucking great. He kills it on this album, and it's a really nice tribute to Vinny. I, uh, this didn't bring a tear at me, but it did make me feel like, yeah, I bet Vinny's actually proud of how these guys carried on. So I really like this. I'm going to give this... I was going to give it a B plus initially, but for emotional value, I think I'm going to elevate that slightly to an A minus. I feel like Vinnie Paul is going to be proud of this work, and Ray Mioga as the sort of like replacement drummer, I guess, is never a bad thing because Ray Mioga is fucking great as well. So yeah, this was definitely the album I feel like Hell Yeah needed to make, even though it was my first one by them, and I haven't listened to any of their old stuff. But this was enjoyable. I really, really like this, um, and a lot more of it stuck with me than I thought it would. So kudos. Uh, next is Hobo Johnson with The Fall of Hobo Johnson, his third album, the first one I'm catching all the way through. And uh, this album and the, and the album I'm going to talk about after this were two of the most emotional experiences I ever had, not helped by the fact that I listened to both of them back to back. Hobo Johnson's The Fall of Hobo Johnson is his typical Hobo Johnson style, is the sort of emo, I guess, rap that he's known for. Putting his emotions on display, adding like an element of fun, never takes himself seriously, never parodies himself really. Um, the storytelling here is great, the instruments and production work, work really well too. I think I'm going to give this an A... A... A? A plus? Fuck it, let's go A plus. I really like this album, I definitely should give it more spins. Um, this isn't usually within my jurisdiction, but as someone who's sort of dabbled with Hobo Johnson in the past, I wanted to listen to a full album of his, and this was a great time for me to jump on uh, to jump on board. Really great stuff. And moving on next to the other emotional album was Corn with the Nothing. Oh my god, Jonathan Davis. That poor dude has been through so much. And he left all that pain out on the paper for this album. And I think I'm going to give this one an A+, plus as well. Like, Homer Johnson made me sort of a sappy ha uh, happy sad. Uh, like a sappy happy, rather. Corn's the Nothing made me feel, like, crying sad. Oh, man. But it was supposed to, and, like, for my money, I think this might be Korn's best album since The Untouchables, and that's an 18-year gap. I mean, not that the stuff in between hasn't been good, but, you know. Uh, yeah, I feel like, uh, yeah, this is an A-plus worthy album. I really, really like this a lot. Uh, next is Of Most and Men with Earth and Sky. Uh, my second album by them, following Defy last year. And this one, honestly, it took me by surprise. I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, heavy, like, it's typical of most of men. And, like, Aaron Pauly, once again, fitting in, fitting in well as a really good uh, lead vocalist and bassist, too. And don't really have a lot of detracting points. Um, I'm going to give this an A-, minus. I think. You know. Maybe I'll vote that to an A. I feel like an A minus is a bit harsh. I'll give that an A. Uh, there was a lot of really, really good stuff on this album. I actually absolutely enjoyed 100% what I got to hear. And uh, yeah, hopefully the band can continue this style going forward because there was a lot of really good heavy stuff. I enjoyed it. So yeah. Uh, next is Puddle of Mud with Welcome to Galvania. Or Galvania. Their first album since... Uh, God, I want to say, like, 10 years, because I think 10 years was when Volume 4, Songs in the Key of Love and Hate came out. My first full Puddle of Mud album, too, by the way. And, uh, notice that Wes Scantlin, the lead singer, has actually gotten over some of his demons and not being so much of a dick. 
and being honest about the fact that he was a dick. I actually quite like that. This album, like, it's got some good moments, but some of the songs are, like, repeats of older ones, and I feel like they weren't necessary, so it does feel a bit lazy. Uh... Man, not, and not enough of it stuck with me to elevate to be, so I'm going to give it a C plus, I think. It wasn't terrible, and there were, like, good moments, like the lead single, Oh No, or Oh Oh, I think it's Oh Oh. Really good lead single. But I feel like the rest of it just sort of fell a little bit flat. There wasn't enough that stuck with my mind. Next is Rome, with Smile Wide, and uh, once again, like, these guys... I talked about them in my uh, last top 10 list about top 10 bands under 10 years into their career. Like, this album is really fucking great. Um, they, you know, they continue to elevate themselves while paying, like, reverence to the bands that came before them in this genre. And, you know, like, I didn't think they could be Great Heights and Nervous Dose. I think I said this in the, in the top 10 video I did. But I'm saying it again, like, Small White is, is better than that album, which surprised me because I thought that album was really great. I think this album's great too. I think I'm going to give it an A-. minus. Uh, ooh, is that too harsh? No, A-. minus. I think that's really good. Um, could wind up somewhere in the top ten. I don't know. I'll have to give it repeated listens, and that's not really a bad thing. Uh, yeah. Enjoyable. Enjoyable pop-punk, British pop-punk stuff. Next is Star Set with Divisions. Arguably one of the albums that um, people will probably, you know, anyone who actually watches these videos... Um, Star Set and their album Divisions is arguably one of the albums that people are more likely hoping to hear me talk about. And I have good things to say about it. It was really good stuff. It's like your typical Star Set. They seem to be like, they added more experimental flavor to this album. Uh, a lot of it did stick with me. Not as much as Vessels, but hell, it's really hard to top an album like Vessels. Divisions is a lot shorter than what Star Set are used to. With, like, I think they're only given 50 minutes or something. But it was enjoyable, and it was fun. I'm going to give it a... Um, I think I'm going to give it a B plus. I don't think it reaches quite A category for me. I don't think it's going to be in the top 10 albums, uh, in my top albums of the year list, but I did like it. You know, and even a bad Star Set album is better than, you know, a bad band's best work. You know, I, I know that's a phrase I've used from time to time, but it is true. I feel like it sticks here. Uh, next is Tiny Moving Parts with Breathe, my first Tiny Moving Parts album. They're, like, seen as one of the, sort of, modern-day forefathers of what modern emo should sound like. I think this is their seventh album. They put it. They put these things out really quick. I thought this was uh, quite decent. Uh, I wish a lot more of it stuck with me, but what did stick with me was, you know, it was really emotional. It was supposed to be. It was really, like, clean. I do like uh, what I heard. I wish... I wish there were moments of it that could have been a little bit heavier, but I'm just being picky. I think this one gets a... I think this one's going to go B from me. Yeah, I, I wanted more of it to stick with me than it did. But once again, it's, it didn't really offend me. It wasn't bad, so... Kudos. Uh, next is Vitja. I hope I'm saying that correctly with Thirst. I think this is their full-length debut. I don't really know. Um, Vitja are... Um, God, what are they? I think they're sort of a metal band. I don't remember a lot about this album, sadly. Uh, but I listened to the album, and I thought, actually, was that? I'm getting mixed up. But yeah, this album was this album was I. I guess because I don't remember a lot about it, but I think I liked it. I'm just going to give it a B minus and move on before I make myself look like more of an idiot. Um, it was. Hmm. It, it, it was, um, you know, B minus. So I think that's a fair grade to give it. Uh, next, uh, lastly, is Void of Vision with Hyper Days. Um, and this is my first full album by them. I think this is only their second or third album, too, so I sort of jumped on the train quite early. They're an Australian um, hardcore metalcore band, and Australian bands usually deliver on that promise. Uh, so, and they delivered here, Void of Vision did. I actually quite like this. You know, I wish more of it stuck with me, but it was more experimental than I think I was expecting from them. But it still worked, uh, worked quite well, and I did still like it, so I reckon I'm going to give this a B. Yeah, just a solid B. Um, yeah, the, the, it was pretty enjoyable. Yeah, from what I remember. Once again, I think I'll have to listen to it a bit more to try and, like, you know, get more of it stuck in my head. But, yeah, it was good. It was pretty good stuff. So all in all, 
with that being said, um, the month of September, pretty good month for music. I think maybe second favourite so far um, compared to March. To be honest, March has been really hard to beat in terms of the music that came out. And, uh, you know, pretty good bag. And to, the fact that the lowest grade I gave for the month is a C plus should tell you a lot about how good the month really was. So, yeah. Um, that was, uh, it was good. I think it was pretty good stuff. Also, uh, oh, and also, well, I remember, thank you to everyone who tuned in for the Go Home stream on PPW. Can't wait for No Love Lost to wear, hopefully at some point this weekend. And I will see you in the f near future with something, probably a next PBW stream, if I'm being completely honest. That might be the next thing I do. But until then, as always, thank you for watching. You're awesome. Bye-bye.